All right, Jim, do we have Bill plugged in now? How are we doing backstage? All right. Hi, I love you. How are you? Hey, I love you too. Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Levin joins us now from the First Church of Cannabis in Indiana. Bill, how are you doing today, brother? I'm doing outstanding. How are you doing? Good to see you smiling. Oh, thank you. So I always see you. You know, Bill, I, I was so honored to be able to be a, a guest at the First Church of Cannabis uh, earlier this year before things shut down for Corona. Um, and, and, and just to be clear for YouTube's benefit, the only drugs that you are consuming are totally legal nicotine only because we wouldn't want to trigger even the YouTube sensors in this silly sensitive area. But when I got to visit the church, there was a similar sharing of smokables but it was at that point, it was just we're not sharing. Have, have you guys been affected much beyond that by Corona or, or your flock? Do, do they know better? We we uh, we closed down and did a COVID uh, broadcast for three months uh, where there were only four of us in the church. And uh, we opened up for services last week and did social distancing. And it was our five-year anniversary. We've, we've been crazy for five years having fun and uh, helping our community. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, they try to chase. They spend $30,000 our opening day to chase us out. And we spent five years uh, serving our community. So they're a little well, miffed. Bill, for people who don't know the story, please take us back to the beginning. How did we get this beautiful gift to the world that is the First Church of Cannabis? Wow. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I got my license uh, uh, to marry people in 2010. Okay. So I was out marrying people, doing that religious thing. And every time I passed by a church, I always said, gee, you know, what would it be like to have a church? It's like getting a lottery ticket, not knowing if you hit or not. Uh, so there was a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of fertilizer in the state of Indiana uh, in 2015 uh, from Mike Pence and his little uh, friends. And, uh, you know, when there's a lot of fertilizer out there, things tend to grow. And uh, I sat down one night and I said, if I were to start a religion, what would it be structured like? How would I do it? What would I call it? I uh, had a deeply moving religious experience, and uh, I came up with the Deity Dozen. Hold on, Bill. I got to interrupt just yeah. for a second here. Yeah. For, you know we're, we're broadcasting today from the No Force One Studios, from the bus that we had yeah. with the First Church of Cannabis. And because my wife put it on our fridge, we have the Deity Dozen posted <laughs> Right there. Look at that. Look at that. I didn't plan that shot. That was that was uh, as awkward as it gets. But yes, that's it. It's, it's a little wrinkled because it's been it's been sitting on our fridge for what? Well, when did when did we get to visit? Was it February or March? Yeah. Spring. Yeah, February, March. I don't. You know, right now this yeah. year you don't you can't count the year this year. Oh man, I know it's crazy. Yeah, for a while. Well, today today you know, and I want to get your take on this too, but for. You know, today was like the first time in a long time I looked at the news and was like, this is boring. Corona's crowding out everything interesting, both in reality and in the news. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's but it, it's been a, it's been a time warp for everyone on so many levels. But sorry to interrupt your flow there, Bill, if you would yeah. please back to the deity doesn't because this is this is so powerful. You know, we do. We look at this every day. You know, it's it's. It's a modern religion for modern time. And we are the only religion out of the uh, recorded history of religions that included humor in our doctrine. <laughs> what the fuck? Really? Really? Wait, hold on a second. Now, I mean, every, I know. Really? Every single now, now, I know, I know hold on, Bill. I, I know you do it better than anybody else. I'm, I'm giving you that for sure. But the all, there's no other religion like that. I mean, I, or, I, please give me this distinction again. 
that that in, that makes humor part of the dog. Because I love this. It's number eleven. Laugh often, share humor, have fun in life, be positive. Okay. The head of Butler University Religious Department, the guy who has more books on religion than I ever dreamt possible lining the walls of his office, did some research, and uh, he, he came to testify for us in court, and he signified that, yes, we are a religion, and we are the only religion in recorded history to embrace humor the closest thing anybody found was laughing yoga and that just sort of popped up but that's, that's not yeah, in yeah. The, that's not in right. the written doctrine yeah that's that's okay. a, a, a secondary practice of of hinduism right right so hmm. right now we got that yeah, and don't be a troll on the internet because no other really. If you had to explain to the other guys who had the other religions, hey, there's going to be this great little magic box that you can talk to everybody in the world all at once and choose them and pick them and you know like them and hate them, they would look at you and go, "You're nuts!" You know, you're absolutely out of your mind. They wouldn't understand that. Um, and ah, <laughs> beautiful. That's Penny. She's a baby peacock, <laughs> four weeks old. She's dancing here on the table. Here, go away. Go away. <laughs> go away. So how did the deity dozen relate to the development of the church? It was a great building cornerstone for uh, love to grow, grow, you know, with positive energy. Um, we, dude, we went church shopping. Church shopping is one of the most amazing things you will ever do in your life. If you get bored, go shop churches and listen to the reasons that the churches yeah. have failed. And look at the rings on the men who are telling you why the church has failed. And look at the car they just got out of. When I see a church that sat 750 and said they only have 75 people going in there now, and he's driving a, you know, at the time it was a 2014 or a 2015 uh, Escalade with a ring on it that could choke a mule. Uh, and the only thing he did is work for God. And he wonders why his building has fallen apart around him. Uh, why it's closed and why he wants so much money for it. Okay, so let me let me add, this this uh, man. My gears are turning. It sounds like a really fun exercise. Like I almost want to make a video, like going to a dozen different churches, synagogues, temples, mosques, etc. Hi, I'm shopping for religion. Why should I join your church? Um, what what would you guess the average Christian answer to that question would be? In America. Come in, try it. If you like it, great. We celebrate love and life's great adventure. We basically teach all the teachings of Christ and the Buddha without the burden of any old books. Well, that's you know, what you would say. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think? What, what, so what, what do you think the Christian pastor would say that that's failing people now? Right now, I, 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 the people who protested our church were Christians. The people who are judgmental against our church are Christians. Um, I have never seen a black Jesus in any of their houses. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't think there were any white people in the Bible. You know, it wasn't Uncle Herb with his long, blonde, flowing hair uh, and, and, and a loincloth looking like Tarzan. No, that doesn't happen. Uh, you know, everybody's allowed to have their own religious beliefs. I, uh, 
created a, I, I created a uh, common sense spiritual religious uh, experience by being a canitarian uh, that most people can embrace. You know, um, it's it's not just about cannabis; it's a lifestyle. You know, I took a vow of poverty, so all this fight over money, I just look at my laughs and. Hmm. You know, yeah, there's a lot of corruption out there. There's a lot of vile assholes out there. Uh, you know, if you can get close to the honeypot, which is the tax dollar. OK, that's the largest honeypot in the world. Let's think about it. Where's all the cash? Oh, U.S. tax dollar. There's a there, there's the most money there than there is really anywhere else. Ooh, hey, let's control it. How do you do that? Oh, politics. OK, They're, whoever controls the slush fund is a criminal and they're really good criminals uh, until recently. And he's just a dumb criminal. Um, once the whole system's broken, tear it down, start over again. You know, uh, it, it, it's run by greed and greed in its nature is corruption. You cannot, well, you can't eliminate greed because there's corruption with it. They go hand in hand. You show me a million dollars, I'll show you a crime. So can you explain the vow of poverty and how that contrasts to how a lot of libertarians would think of, you know, one of the, uh, you know, advantages of, our philosophy being based on property rights and nonviolence is that you can uh, accumulate or create value. When you run a life and all your life decisions are based on money, you're missing life. If you remove all the money decisions from your life, you're only left with running your life. OK, I, I, I. I'm old. I have every cool fashion needed in my closet. <laughs> I can open a trunk and go get my bell bottoms from night. I still have them <laughs> from 1972. <laughs> I wore them once to my in front of my daughter and she ran up to me and she goes, oh, my God, Daddy, what's wrong? I go, why? Because your ankles are so swollen. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, I I don't need anything. You know, I I, I when you're when you're in your twenties, your thirties, your forties, you're out there, you're proving things. You you know, you're making achievements. Money becomes a burden. Chasing money becomes a burden because you can never get enough. Never get enough. If you completely remove it, you know, wow, you got time to do shit. You got time to live your life. You got time to actually explore, to research, uh, to build a better you, to play with little peacocks who just bit me. <laughs> Come over here. Come over here. Show yourself to me. <laughs> Um, yeah, I can get with nature, obviously. <laughs> I can hand raise birds, uh, which is something I love doing. I have a very beautiful, um, I, I, I got a mixed breed bird that I think I'm going to continue to have these birds mixed breed, uh, because he's going to end up, you know, Brahmas, the big birds, big fuzzy birds, fluffy birds, right? They got fluffy feet. They got little boots. And the Polish, which have all the uh, feathers out like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so they made it. And now I have a punk rock rooster who is growing a mohawk, uh, has little feather boots, and he's getting a tartan, uh, you know, a little tartan vest thing going. Here, wait, wait. Come here. Oh, you make me miss having chickens. All right, well, hey. Here. Here. 
<laughs> nice. Nice. Can't wait to see him full size. So, Bill, when, when I got to visit the first Church of Cannabis, I was really impressed by the community spirit in the service that you had created there. And, you know, there, there's, can, can you tell people what, what makes your service unique and, and how can people connect with you online? Cause you're, you're still stringy. I mean, even before oh, yeah. Corona, all of your services were streamed as well, right? We uh, started streaming on YouTube and we started uh, realizing that we weren't getting the reaction we wanted. And then we went over to Facebook uh, when Facebook Live started. And we get anywhere between 1,500 to 3,000 views a week, um, which is better than we were doing on YouTube. Uh, people can actually watch during the service, which they can do on YouTube, but they weren't clicking in. I, there's some weird psychology with that. I don't understand it. Um, but we broadcast every night, every Wednesday night at 730 uh, from fa facebook.com slash canitarian. And that's our uh, first Church of Cannabis page. And it has our links. And we got a, a web page finally. Ta-da. Uh, it's uh, tfcoc.org. Tfcoc.org. The first uh, church of cannabis dot org. Yeah, but it's just the letters because the initials. Awesome. Yeah, somebody somebody got our name and called me up <laughs> and wanted to sell it to me uh, for a thousand dollars, and I just told him to go fuck himself and hung up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, what makes your services special? I because I I could try to describe it and talk about some of the you know the the the, the open mic element or you know, the, the call and response element that you have with people there in person, but I, that, that doesn't capture it because there's something else special that you have done with your service. How would you describe that? We, 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 dude, we celebrate love and people don't focus on love. When was the last time you focused on love when you were in church, isn't it? When, when was the last time you focused on the physical aspects a love the actual action that goes on here in your body when you see your puppy your bird your girlfriend your kids that actual physical reaction of where you get excited right here okay you get excited when you see something you love you automatically smile when you see something you love it is an actual physical reaction we spark that we ignite that and we make you focus on that because we all have it, but we don't look canitarians celebrate love in life's great adventure. We actually have to concentrate on what love is on a physical being. We take 10 minutes a day just to contemplate life in a quiet space. We're focusing in on our love. We're focusing in on our, on our, on our week, on our health, on our goals. It's a love activator. If you love hard enough, if you can get this little butterfly cage with that butterfly flapping its wings, every time it touches the cage, it sparks. It sparks just a little bit, okay? And when it makes those sparks, you get goosebumps. And if you do it right, you can make goosebumps on your arm. If you make goosebumps, you have activated love. And if you activate love, you smile and you radiate it. You can actually radiate it out of a building because we do it weekly. And after we radiate love out of the building, no matter what, I guarantee everybody feels better in that room. Everybody who sees that part of the service feels better about themselves. And you oh, know yeah. why? You know why? The real killer reason why? We got Scotty, and there's killer sound effects in our service. We don't bore people to death. Boring people to death is, you know, all right, let's have a moment of silence. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. That silence cannot follow. 
Hey, you I gotta, cannot I gotta, follow I, silence. I got to do a, a, a plug for my speech from when I was there because Scotty was so awesome. He was able to even on my cue spontaneously jump in with some amazing sound effects. We had a lot of fun with that. And yeah, I, I think if, there, if I could say there was one thing, it's the way you talk about love. You know, and, and I, I have always said as a libertarian, it's about love for humanity. First and foremost, it has to motivate our activism. If we are motivated by a, a sense of injustice, it's, it's an injustice against something that we love. And that really is the ultimate motivator. And it's something that you know, a lot of people don't have the, the words for. You know, it's been kind of beaten out of us in a lot of ways to talk about love directly and openly the way that you do so powerfully with the First Church of Cannabis. So tfcoc.org. Bill, any last thoughts or other ways that people should be able to get a hold of you? Uh, I'm easily found on Facebook uh, at uh, Bill J. Levin. Um, look for a mask and hair. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm here. If somebody wants me, you know, I, 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 you know, get hundreds of calls a week and people ask me strange and unusual things. And hopefully I have answers. I love you. You're really awesome. Oh my goodness. We have graphics. There it is. Look oh, at that. Oh, oh, oh this side. Beautiful yeah. website. <laughs> wow. It All is. right, so everybody check it out, please. Wednesday night, that's 7 p.m. Central Time. 7.30 uh, Indiana time. I, I, you know, <laughs> half, the time, half, the, half the year we're with New York, and half the year we're Central Time. Right, right. now it's 1.34 here. Where are you? I'm in Arizona, which is also on Arizona time. We're so cool we don't do daylight saving. It is 10.35 here. Your state and our state are the two test capitals of the world for products. Oh, that's Fact. right. Yeah, for, for new consumer yeah. products. Interesting yeah. coincidence there. All right, yeah, well, Bill, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure. I love you, and I keep you present every day here with the Deity Dozen. I encourage everybody to check out my fun speech from the first church of cannabis from February of this year and the weekly Sunday or excuse me, weekly Wednesday services at seven 30 Indiana time, tfcoc.org. Bill, thank you so much for joining us. Love you. Love you. All right. Uh, this is, I, I, it's Bill Levin. I, I hope it is, it, it is, we're able to capture it in this inadequate format that is, a streamed live podcast interview online. Like there's just the, the energy and, and love that comes from that man uh, are mm, just, it, it's a, it's a different vibe. You got to check it out. Please go check out some of his earlier sermons. Check out my speech from the first church of cannabis. A lot of fun.